Hi, this is Bruno. Thank you for listening to the song and my reviews in my channel. This LP vinyl is Bruckner Symphony Number no. Seven in E Major, and you just listen to the second movement, Adagio molto lento, E maestoso. Lovrov von Matacic conducted and Czech Philharmonic Orchestra performed. This vinyl was released on Supraphon label in 1967 and the condition of the vinyl is very good in spite of the long period of time. It was played with Nordmundi Phono Super 59Z Vintage Tube Turntable made in West Germany in 1959 and still it is working beautifully. As a matter of fact, this song is quite famous, especially in Korea, because this music was used as a, as a original soundtrack for the Admiral Lee Sun Shin in the TV series The Immortal Lee Sun Shin years ago. And the Admiral Lee is, is a legendary general who fought against the Japanese army in late 16th century so that TV series is still very popular and historically speaking, Admiral, Admiral Lee is one of the most famous and respected figure in Korea. Now, I hope to tell you about the life and work of Anton Bruckner, focusing on his Symphony No. 7 in E major. Anton Bruckner stands as a giant in the realm of 19th century symphonic music. Often placed alongside Brahms as a successor to the Austro-German tradition of Beethoven, Bruckner developed a unique style of characterized by grand scale, rich harmonies, and a profound sense of religious devotion. His symphonies, particularly his later works, are known for their monumental structure, soaring melodies, and moments of both immense power and serene beauty. I hope to focus on Bruckner's Symphony No. 7 in E major composed between 1881 and 1883. While Bruckner's symphonies often faced initial criticism for their complexity and length, the Seventh Symphony marked a turning point, achieving his first true critical and public success. Anton Bruckner was born in Ansfelden, Austria, and Bruckner received his early music training as a church organist. Throughout his career, he held organist position at various esteemed churches in Austria, including the prestigious St. Florian, Florian Monastery. This deep connection to the church significantly influenced his, his compositional style and with his symphonies often reflecting a sense of awe and grandeur associated with his religious experience. Bruckner revered the works of Beethoven and sought guidance from the established composer Antonin Reicha. Despite his talent, 
Bruckner faced challenges in gaining recognition for his symphonies. Some critics found them unwieldy and overly complex, while others favored the more concise style of Brahms. However, Bruckner remained dedicated to his vision, continuously revising his works and finding enthusiastic, enthusiastic supporters, and particularly conductor Franz Schalk and composer Richard Wagner. The Symphony No. 7 was composed between 1881 and 1883, and Bruckner's Symphony No. 7 marked a significant milestone in his career. The symphony was dedicated to King Ludwig II of Bavaria, a fervent patron of Wagner, with whom Bruckner shared a deep artistic connection. The symphony's premiere in Leipzig in 1884, under the baton of Arthur Nikisch, was a resounding success. The work's grandeur, thematic clarity, and emotional depth resonated with audiences and critics alike. Bruckner finally received the recognition he craved, marking a turning point in his reputation. Symphony No. 7 adheres to the traditional four-movement structure of, of the classical symphony. However, Bruckner expands upon his form, creating a vast sonic canvas brimming with contrasting moods and textures. Let's talk about the first movement. The symphony opens with a soft tremolo string figure that gradually builds to a majestic statement of the main theme. Bruckner employs a cyclical approach using thematic fragments throughout the movement for development and tension. The second movement. This second movement is a vibrant dance movement with contrasting sections of light-hearted playfulness and movement, actually moments of introspection. It showcases Bruckner's skill in rhythmic invention and orchestral color. And the third movement. This third movement is one of the most celebrated movements in Bruckner's symphony. It is a profound and deeply emotional explanation of grief and solace. Notably, this movement features the first ever use of Wagner's tubas in symphonic music, lending a unique serenity to the melancholic melodies. And the last movement, the finale, is a triumphant and celebratory conclusion, and Bruckner utilizes a powerful main theme and expertly builds to the majestic climax, leaving a lasting impression of grandeur and optimism. Bruckner's Symphony No. 7 remains one of the most beloved and frequently performed symphonies in the repertoire. It com its combination of accessibility and complexity, moments of intimate reflection alongside powerful pronoun pronouncements, continues to captivate audiences. The symphony stands as a testament to Bruckner's unique voice and its profound impact on the symphonic tradition. Anton Bruckner's Symphony No. 7 represents a pinnacle of his creative achievement. It not only marked a personal triumph, but also secured his place as a major figure in the history of symphonic music. Through his innovative use of form, 
rich harmonies and powerful emotional expression, the Seventh Symphony continues to inspire and engage listeners, solidifying Bruckner's legacy as a composer of immense depth and grandeur. Thank you for listening to the song and my review once again, and I hope to I hope I hope you to have a, a had a great time in my channel. Thank you again, and see you next time. Bye.